In this recording, we're going to learn about the Shapes tool, which is found here on the left-hand toolbar. And you'll notice when you mouse over shapes that there are options for Eclipse, Pi, Rectangle, Trapezoid and Parallelogram, Polygon, and Star Shape. So let's begin by selecting a new design tab that's got an empty workspace, choosing the Ellipse tool, and if I left-click and drag, I create the shape. And when you left click and drag, as long as you don't let go, you can continue to adjust the shape to either be, you know, longer or shorter and taller, whatever perspective you would like. Now it's possible to force the eclipse to stay as a perfect circle if you hold the control key down before you begin to create the circle and then drag it diagonally across, you can create a perfect circle in that way. And of course, whenever you use the Shapes tool, then if you use the Edit Nodes tool, you'll be able to edit those shapes in very unique ways. So with the ellipse, if I choose Edit Nodes, I'm given two points, the center, which I can use for the position of it, and then a point on the outer edge, which I could use to change its size and its shape. And so that is the ellipse shape. The next shape tool we can look at is the Pi tool. And when I choose Pi, I get a tool option at the top of my screen, which allows me to mathematically choose a start angle and a stop angle. And so notice when I click and drag that I can create sort of the overall perspective of my Pi shape and that the start angle and stop angle were defined by 90 and zero. And if I change this to be, let's say 45 and zero and draw another shape, we will see that that is reflected. In fact, the previous one, I had not right clicked to finish drawing it. And so because of that, it actually adjusted the, the tool that I created. Now notice when we draw the shapes, Pi shape, we can adjust the start angle and the stop angle. When I right click to finish drawing it, and now we have all of the tool angles that include things like the position and the weight, the width and the height, the scale, proportionate, etc. But notice now we have that start angle and stop angle have been added to the tool options. So you could easily select a shape that you've made previously, come to the tool options and change it from 45 to 90 or from 45 to 135. And in that way, you can create any pie shape that you wish. So again, to use the tool, we select pie from the toolbar and we left click and drag to create it. And we use the tool option to adjust the specific angle of the piece of the pie shape. The next shape tool mode we can look at is rectangle. And when we choose rectangle, we simply click and drag. Oh, I'm still on pi. We need to choose rectangle and then click and drag to create the rectangular shape. And so again, using click and drag allows you to create any type of shape of rectangle that you want. If you hold down your control key, it will get your rectangle shape to stay within a square or in it. So it's, it locks it to different degrees on your screen and so just like the circle if you hold down control and left click and drag across the diagonal of a shape you can easily create a square shape based on the rectangle tool and in the same way that we could edit the shape of the ellipse we can use the edit nodes tool to edit the nodes of our rectangle or of our other shapes with the rectangle, when we choose the Edit Nodes option, we are given a node for the corners, which will take from sharp corners to rounded corners. We're given a node for the center, which we can use to adjust the position, and we're given a node on the opposite corner, which you could use to change the size and perspective of the rectangle shape. And so again, it's with the square and rectangle shapes that when we choose the edit nodes, we can move the position, the size and perspective, and we can round the corners. 
if we choose edit nodes with the pie shapes, then we're given a center one, which we can use to change the position. We're given one on the bottom of the pie shape to adjust the, I guess, end point of the pie shape, and one on the top to adjust the start point of the pie shape. And so in this way, you can very easily visually adjust the shape of your pie. And one final node, and that would be outside of the shape where you can then adjust the size and perspective of your pie shape. The next shape tool that we can look at is the trapezoid parallelogram. And in this case, when I click, oops, I gotta turn on that tool. I click and drag, I create the different sides of the trapezoid or parallelogram, depending on the shape that you create. So if I make it tall or narrow or long and squat, you can see how it adjusts to give you, basically you adjust the height and the width and it creates this parallelogram. Now, what we have in the tool options is the slant option. And so if we change that slant from 50 to let's say 30, and hit enter, you can see how it adjusts the shape of the parallelogram. Now, if we make this a trapezoid, then now if I draw the shape as a trapezoid, it draws the, sh the two parallel sides and the other two parallel sides. And so now when I click and drag, I can create the shape of a trapezoid. And I can still adjust with my tool options the slant value. So if I turn that up to 90, well, it's going to be quite dramatic. If I turn it down to 10, it'll be very, whoops, that's 100. 10, it'll be very gradual. And so those are the uh, ability to do the parallelogram and the trapezoid. The next is polygon. And when I choose polygon, the tool options are for the number of sides and the start angle. So if I click and drag, I get a six sided polygon with a start angle of 90. If I make this, let's say five, that would be 50. How about we make it five, enter, and click and drag. I'll create a five sided If I make this, oh, see, it edited the first one. I was going to say, I, I thought I had a six. Let's make one six. It's going to edit that. And let's draw another one with seven. So we'll change the number to seven. That is 70. Be careful. Seven. And so you can see, in fact, if I draw another one, I'll have a seven and you can make eight and etc. Now, you can also adjust the start angle. And so if I make this start angle from 90 to let's say 45, it's gonna be like I rotated that um, parallelogram to be at a different slightly off center. And so in that way, the same thing could be done with the edit nodes tool. You see when you have the turn on edit nodes, you select the center node to adjust the position, you adjust the starting position by grabbing on the node that's on the side. And then you can adjust the size and perspective with the node which is slightly outside. Very much the same when using edit nodes on our trapezoids and our parallelograms. Did I call this, a, this is a polygon, this is the parallelogram. I'm making you guys confused. But let's move over so you can see when I use on the this is the trapezoid. I can adjust the center for the position. I can come outside for the size and perspective. I can adjust with the bottom one, the slant, I guess is what it would be. And with the top one, I can adjust the shape. Okay. And finally, with the shape tool, we have the star shape. And so obviously they're all very similar. Uh, let's see if we move off of our screen a little bit further and I have the star shape selected and I click and drag, I will create a star. And in a star shape, the tool options are going to be the number of rays, the ray size and the start angle. And so for example, if I select a new star shape and make the, ray, the number of rays um, five and then I click and drag, we'll make a five pointed star. And if I change the ray size from 60 to let's say 
80, it'll make them less pointy. If I make it 20, it'll make them kind of very drastic. And the start angle is set at 90, and if I change that to be maybe 45, it'll rotate it. So you can see how that is the tool options for creating stars. Now, just like all shapes, if we choose Edit Nodes, now I can use the nodes to adjust the ray size, to adjust the position, to adjust the start angle, and to adjust the overall size and perspective. If I want to change the number of rays, I'm going to need the tool op to use the tool options and type it in there, and I can increase the number of rays from 6 to 7 and 8, etc. And so that is how you can use the tool shape. And in general, that is how all of our different tool uh, shapes work.